When my child was in kindergarten, they came home one day and said, oh my gosh, mom, I just love this Richard Sands. And I remember just crinkling my forehead, just thinking, Richard Sands? Who's Richard Sands? And I went to the elementary school and watched all these little darling kindergartners stand up when the TV monitor came on and the pledge came on. And these little mouths just, you know, were trying their best to say the pledge. And I looked over and <laughs> watched my little darling say, uh, when the part came for which it stands and just clear as day, I saw for Richard Sands and how proud. <laughs> well, because it was the Pledge of Allegiance, it just got me thinking, and then of course, uh, researching. And my research is quite extensive. However, I'm just going to try to go through this rapidly, pause as you will, um, and fact check as I hope anybody would do. Anyway, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance was originally written by Francis Bellamy. He was a socialist. He wrote it for a children's magazine and then later went into public relations and was still proud that the Pledge of Allegiance had left um, an impression on young minds. The original Bellamy salute was with the right arm extended and the palm down which, as you can quite imagine, was changed after the 1930s, after you know who. Some criticisms of the pledge are that it's recited really by young children who cannot give their consent, nor do they understand the words that they're saying. Um, the whole First Amendment, uh, <laughs> the right to religion, assembly, press, petition, and speech, are really built on dissent to say, uh, to be able to have criticisms. Um, and the c students are coerced into pledging their freedom, which is a paradox in and of itself. Um, what I consider the parsoning of the Pledge of Allegiance was that it's, it's just been used as a political weapon. It was used for schools to combat nativism it was then amended in 1924 to add in the United States of America uh, during the time of a 1924 immigration law that was passed that kept uh, immigrants out at that particular time. The phrase one nation under God was used to combat communism. As far as intent is concerned, you know, I see quotes like this one and whether he believed that immigrants were inferior. Sometimes I, I question that. I'm, I'm a, a skeptic because, you know, you'd never know. But let's go back to the pledge. Um, there were some Supreme Court issues. I just put a few up here. But initially, it started because of uh, Jehovah Witnesses and Mennonites who were being persecuted for not saying the pledge. And their point was that the Pledge of Allegiance, you are uh, pledging your allegiance to something other than a higher power. And so that turned into a Supreme Court case. It's really long stories behind each one of these. However, I just wanted to point out that it's been kind of this tennis match back and forth between how to use the pledge. Um, in one of the Supreme Court cases, it was pointed out that it's perpetuating and teaching the machinery of government. I personally could spend a lot of time talking about the pros of the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I put some quotes up here. Uh, the only reason why I think I focus on some of the criticisms in this particular instance is because at least for the majority of schools that do say the Pledge of Allegiance, we don't take time to really understand and talk about what, what we're doing. Um, another opinion, and, and I thought it was really interesting to have a Supreme Court case overturned within just three years. So you have the Supreme Court members that are relatively the same. And um, I just thought this was an interesting quote by uh, the opinion piece from Justice 
Jackson. And then Black and Douglas concurred in his sentiment with this quote, which I thought was, was kind of poignant. Okay, so you have a little bit of, tiny bit of history of the pledge, uh, how it ties to education and how it's been kind of used as a tool. So now what? So let's just stop the world and break it down. Uh, dictionary definitions of the word pledge date back to the Middle Ages, as does the word allegiance, which means uh, to give loyalty to a liege. When we talk about the Republic, um, it's interesting because once I put the Republic up on the board, I might have mentioned this before, but I put the Republic up on the board and and I said, how many of you have heard the Republic? And, you know, students just like, no, I no, don't really talk about it. And yet I point out that they just said the, they just pledged their allegiance to the Republic. <laughs> so I don't think that's what Plato had in mind. Um, liberty being free without oppressive restrictions and the power to act as one pleases can sounds kind of good on the one hand and a little dangerous, but if you add justice, a just behavior or treatment, it needs to have concern for justice and peace and the genuine respect for the people. And indivisible, I think, is a kind of an interesting concept because when we say indivisible, that kind of alludes to the fact that we can't be divided. <laughs> and the Declaration of Independence says that it's the right of the people to alter, to affect their safety and happiness, which in, is in effect pointing out that we are divisible. Anyway, my bottom line, Richard stands at this. <laughs> stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, sit down for the Pledge of Allegiance. That's that's beyond what, what I want to control. What I think is my responsibility is to bring attention to at least make a decision. The It's the apathy, at least on the high school level, that's the most disturbing to me. Well, the most disturbing to me might be that little kids um, don't understand the words to this pledge, and I think that that we should take some time <laughs> And, uh, and at least dissect it and think about what we're doing on a daily basis. Thanks. On an end note, I just wanted to point out that the Jehovah Witnesses, as well as Mennonites, were subject to arrest and even sent to concentration camps in Germany at that time for not standing up and pledging uh, their allegiance to the Nazi flag. And then in the 30s, 40s, 50s, e even up to last year in the United States, there have been expulsions and arrests uh, dealing with the Pledge of Allegiance. There was a Colorado case of a, of a teacher who um, <clears throat> did time for physically uh, forcing a, a student to stand up and say the pledge. And Alabama right now is um, trying to make sure that from K through 12, that it's law that every student has to stand up and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I did I did do some calling. <laughs> I just called around to high schools kind of around the country and asked, you know, how often, you know, do you say the pledge or not? And I, I think you can probably figure out which schools are more likely to say the Pledge of Allegiance and which schools uh, <laughs> said, no, we do not say the pledge or have an alternative like a moment of silence or something like that. Anywho, um, just a little addendum. Thanks again.